Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. Uh, today we get to bring you all of Nintendo's sales updates at their big financial meeting. We got the total lifetime sale date update for the Nintendo Switch itself, launch sales for Pokemon Legends Arceus, and so much more. Now, before I get into this, I want to remind you, we do have a giveaway going on right now for two copies of Mario Strikers Battle League. This giveaway is our for our kickoff event for Prime Gaming Fest on June 9th at 9 a.m. That is when the winners will be announced. If you want to enter to win one of two copies, so two different winners for this game, all you gotta do is head down and click on the link in the description or the pinned comment. I wish all of you guys luck, and if this is the first time you've ever seen a Nintendo Prime video, I would appreciate if you would subscribe. Now let's just get right into the data because we have so much to get into. First up, the Nintendo Switch has shipped 107.65 million units as of March 31st, 2022. This is actually 4.11 million units shipped for the final quarter of their fiscal year. This is really, really good and really impressive sales in general. I am very, very happy with these sales, of course, and I'm sure Nintendo is as well. Uh, as you'll see later, they ended up selling, uh, where is it, right here. They ended up selling 23.06 million units for the year, which is slightly ahead of their last projection of just 23 million now we have all the updated software sales listed right here and i'm really really this is just awesome so mario kart 8 deluxe is sold now 45 million that is a 1.98 million increase for the quarter uh animal crossing new horizons has sold 38.64 million a 1.02 million increase for the quarter super smash Bros. ultimate has now sold 28.17 million which is 770,000 plus units for the quarter the legend of zelda breath of the wild has now sold 26.55 million that is seven 750,000 unit increase for the quarter. Pokemon Sword and Shield has now sold 24.27 million, a 370,000 unit increase for the quarter. Super Mario Odyssey is now at 23.5 million, a 480,000 increase for the quarter. Super Mario Party is now at 17.78 million, that's a 390,000 unit increase for the quarter. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are now at 14.65 million unit units that is 680,000 units for the quarter pokemon let's go so this would be the you know let's go pokemon or let's go pikachu and eevee are now at 14.53 million that's a 200,000 unit increase for the quarter ring fit adventure is at 14.09 million units that's a 560,000 unit increase for the quarter new super mario Bros. u deluxe is at 13.31 million that's a 590,000 unit increase for the quarter splatoon 2 is at 13. 3.0 million units. That's a 620,000 increase since September of 2021 because we didn't have, uh, we, we didn't really get unit updates uh, for this before uh, in the last quarter. So Pokemon Legends Arceus uh, debuted at 12.64 million units. Luigi's Mansion 3 is at 11.43 million units, as sold 390,000 in the last quarter. Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury is at 9.43 million units, that's an increase of 580,000 units in the last quarter. Mario Party Superstars is at 6.88 million, that is a 1.45 million increase for the quarter. Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics is at 4.22 million, and they just give us a general update of 1.08 million since March of 2021. They didn't give us any updates on it before, so hey, look, there you go. It actually crossed a million for the year. The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD is at 300. Uh, 3.91 million units, uh, that is a 60k increase. Uh, for the quarter metroid dread is at 2.90 million units that is 160,000 uh unit increase still hasn't crossed 3 million come on metroid dread i know we could do it guys let's get it across 3 million that would be amazing uh next up kirby and the forgotten land at 2.65 million so that are that's the full launch sales remember that launched right at the end of the quarter uh new pokemon snap is at 2.4 million 40 million uh, that's a 40,000 increase, although it doesn't have Japan sales because it wasn't published by Nintendo in Japan. Uh, Mario Golf Super Rush is at 2.35 million. That had a 90K increase for the quarter. Uh, Miitopia is at 1.68 million with a 50,000 unit increase for the quarter. Big Brain Academy Brain vs. Brain is at 1.59 million with a 310,000 unit increase for the quarter. WarriorWare Get It Together is at 1.27 million with a 30,000 unit increase for the quarter. And Game Builder Garage 
is at 1.06 million with a 50,000 unit increase. Remember, Nintendo does not really report on anything other than their million sellers. So if they have any other IP on Switch that hasn't sold a million units, it won't be listed by Nintendo officially. Um, so next up, I wanted to focus on this. Nintendo has listed and updated on its 2022 releases for Bayonetta 3. And you're seeing here that, hey, look, Bayonetta 3 is still coming out this year. Some of you guys might be wondering, where are the rest of Nintendo's games? How come I don't see Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope on this list? Well, because Nintendo doesn't make that game. That's Ubisoft. It won't actually appear on Nintendo's list in the first place. So you can still see that they're pretty rock solid here on these games with July 29th for Xenoblade 3, September 9th for Splatoon 3, obviously late 2022 for Scarlet, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, and Bayonetta 3 still listed for this year. This is pretty good news that Bayonetta 3 is still listed. This should quell any worries that Nintendo still does not have Bayonetta 3 in the plans. It's just a matter of what month that they want to drop Bayonetta 3. So good, 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 good news uh, for all of us. Uh, obviously, though, you look at this and you go, they got to have a little bit something after September besides just these two games, right? Well, I guess uh, that's what a potential direct next month could be for. Uh, next up, John Cartwright noted something really, really interesting here about the Nintendo Switch. There are more Switch consoles than there are Wii U games. So 107.65 million hardware here, only 103.48 million pieces of software were ever sold for Wii U. Uh, that is astonishing to see. Like, I, it's hard for me to even fathom that this is possible despite the Wii U not being a big success, but hot damn. Now, obviously, you know, if Switch software ever hits a billion, that will be really impressive as well. Now, I wanted to show this next one because uh, Nintendo wasn't the only one dropping their financials tonight. Sony was as well. Uh, so PlayStation... Uh, you know, PlayStation quarter four results. So their final results for the year, they sold uh, 2 million PlayStation fives in the fourth quarter lifetime to date. PlayStation five sold are at 19.3 million. Uh, they sold by the way, around 11 million PlayStation fives in the last fiscal year. Uh, that, you know, they're very, 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 very heavily supply constrained. I would presume because 11 million is probably not what Sony is hoping to sell, especially when you have Nintendo Switch out there selling 23 million in that same span. Uh, anyway, they're at 47.4 million PlayStation Plus subs, which is actually down year over year. Uh, digital software ratio, 71% of all sales are digital. Uh, 70.5 million PlayStation software with 14.5 million first party software this quarter. Uh, Sony doesn't give us the same exact details on a game by game basis as Nintendo does. Uh, so this is kind of what we're stuck with here for our knowledge base on that. So what do we really learn here? We learned that Nintendo is still killing it. Uh, that they still expect to sell 21 million units this fiscal year, which is absolutely insane. And Bayonetta 3 is still coming. Uh, Metroid Dread, uh, to me, I'm a little bit disappointed Metroid Dread didn't hit 3 million. It's not really showing a strong tail of sales at this point. I do I do think by the end of this year, it probably will hit 3 million. But obviously, some of us had some hopes that maybe it could push to 4 or 5. It kind of looks like Metroid Dread doesn't have that evergreen effect that other Nintendo games have. That is what it is. You know, I, it always was kind of wishful thinking that Metroid Dread, even though being an amazing game, could have an evergreen effect because Metroid has never been an evergreen franchise for Nintendo. Uh, so maybe that's actually a candidate for a price drop at some point this year. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's just, just a hint, hint Nintendo. That might be the game that needs a price drop to continue to push sales. But you know what? I'm actually really, really thrilled overall with these results. I think Nintendo had a very, very strong showing. The fact that they sold more Nintendo Switch units than their last projection stated just by a little bit. You know, it was only about 60,000 units more than they projected. But still... That is more than they projected. Uh, and the fact that they're still projecting to sell another 21 million uh, is insane because that means by the end of this next fiscal year, uh, you know, they should be right around 128 million units sold, which is pretty impressive. Now, this presumes they don't end up having to shift their projections 
down, Nintendo obviously has been able to secure much more manufacturing than Sony. That that much is clear. The fact that Sony could only sell 11 million PlayStation 5s in the same span that Nintendo Switch is more than double that. Uh, and we know Microsoft, who doesn't obviously do their quarters based on the Japanese calendar. Uh, Microsoft has been ramping up Xbox production like crazy. They have thrown money after money after money. The problem, I, I've heard hundreds of millions of dollars thrown at the manufacturing issue uh, to the point that they are flooding the market with Xbox Series right now, trying to take advantage of the fact that Sony is unable to secure enough manufacturing to actually keep up with demand, let alone keep up with Nintendo, and now they're struggling to keep up with Xbox as well. Uh, Xbox is actually rapidly catching up to PlayStation 5 sales because of it. So, Kudos to Microsoft for kind of trying to take advantage of the fact that Sony's really struggling here because, yes, we all know there's a lot of chip shortages and this and that, but a lot of it just comes down to what is the manufacturing that you can secure, and Nintendo is able to secure more than 20 million units being made per year, something Sony is unable to do for whatever reason, and now Microsoft is taking advantage of that, throwing money at the problem, and actually securing more manufacturing than Sony can at the moment as well. So very, very interesting to see that Nintendo, the current market leader, is having no problem maintaining the, the uh, unit production momentum, and obviously Microsoft is throwing money at the problem to make sure that they are now coming ahead of PlayStation as well. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how Sony responds this upcoming fiscal year because clearly they can't sit there and let Nintendo and Microsoft gobble up all of the manufacturing lines and all of the chips and all, you know, basically taking up all the factory space because that's just going to keep pushing PlayStation 5 into this weird position where Sony is kind of like Valve Steam Deck, just lots of demand, but can't actually come close to making enough units. I, I'm very curious on this battle for manufacturing and the battle with the, 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 the markets. Like Basically, Nintendo has all the lines they do because they threw a lot of money at it. Microsoft is now getting all the lines they are in manufacturing because they also threw a lot of money at it. Both of those companies are throwing the weight of their pocketbooks to keep these unit productions up, even though it might hurt the overall profit margins, although Nintendo's profits were obviously yet another record profit year for Nintendo, so they're not hurting. Nintendo is also the richest company in Japan and can afford to throw more money at the problem, maybe even than Sony can. Uh, so, I don't know. It's going to be very interesting. Obviously, we have new factories opening up in 2023 that could solve some of this, uh, won't solve all of it, uh, until about 2025, I think, is when all of the new new factories will be open by 2025, and then at that point, there shouldn't really be any problems, but 2025 is a hell of a long ways away, uh, so if Microsoft and Nintendo gobble up all of the new manufacturing at the new uh, uh, plants next year, and uh, <laughs> Sony is still struggling, it'll be, it'll be very, very interesting. Uh, what's going to happen here. And by the way, I don't think this is necessarily a good thing. I want all the companies to not have any problems at manufacturing, but this is cool. I'm really happy. These are really big numbers. And uh, I think as Nintendo fans, we should all be very, very happy. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next video.